Welcome everyone. We're going to begin our Easter Sunday Mass momentarily. Um, before we start, I'd like to share a video that was released by the Archdiocese uh, yesterday in time for Easter. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. Be the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains. Praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to all my to all my God and to you, and to my you brothers my friend, and sisters, and sister, that I have, that greatly, I have greatly sinned in, my in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, in my thoughts and in my words. Through my fault, through my fault, through my own grievous fault. Therefore, I ask to, to pray for me to Lord our God. Amen. And you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting love. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who on this day to your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. You know the message that spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who are chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things on, that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Paschal victim, give thankful praise. Christ ever sinless, his sheep now he saves. Death and life contended in dreadful strife. Death did not hold him immortal, his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is our risen, the victor, the King. Mary, speak, confessing what you have seen. Christ, to lies empty where once he had been. Angels bright confirming, shroud laid aside. He goes to Galilee, he mortal his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is our risen, the victor, the king. Christians sing his glory with every breath. Sing of his kingdom victorious or death. Jesus grant us mercy, new life from heaven. Christ ever reigns, alleluia, amen. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is our risen, the victor, the king. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
early on the first day of the week while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and, Jesus, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Easter Sunday, I'd like to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead. For us Christians, Easter signifies the beginning of a new era. Everything has changed, and the entire world now looks different. We could think of it in this way. Imagine the day when you wake up in the morning, you check the news, and the news headline says, the vaccine for COVID-19 discovered in big bonds. Imagine the joy that you feel in your heart, the sigh of relief. And imagine the joy that would reverberate throughout the entire world. You might even go into the streets and shout out. 
Rejoice, my friends. We've been set free. Now I can go to Dairy Queens and my favorite coffee shop. I think Father James would say that. And you might text everyone you know. Everything would have changed and the entire world would look different. That kind of joy, to a small degree, conveys the joy of Easter for Christians. That conveys the sense of joy that Peter, John, and Mary Magdalene would have felt when they saw the empty tomb. And I said, to a small degree, we've been going through this pandemic for how long? A few months? How long did the Israelites wait for their Messiah? Try a few thousand years. Recall the Easter Vigil Liturgy that we went through last night. We did all seven readings, all in darkness with just a candlelight that signified faith. And it seemed very long. You see, that was supposed to signify the very many years that the Israelites waited in darkness, only holding on to the light of faith until the coming of the Messiah happened, until the light of Christ arrived, until the Gloria arrived. Now, today's gospel points out what that would have been like in particular for Mary Magdalene. So Mary Magdalene arrives and she's weeping. She loves the Lord. She misses him. And she uh, arrives there early in the morning, uh, even to be near the tomb. I mean, she doesn't know that the Lord has resurrected by this point when she first comes. And um, but she comes regardless because she wants to be near him, uh, regardless of whether he's alive or, or dead. Now, she f- comes uh, to the tomb and finds that it's empty. And she's confused. She doesn't know what that means. And she's sorrowful. Um, and then she sees these, these figures. Uh, today's gospel tells us that they were angels. And she asks them, uh, well, they say, said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And they, she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And then she sees this mysterious figure called um, a gardener, right? She thinks she's a gardener. Now, the gardener harkens back to the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve walked with the Lord. And so it, this scene, this is a mysterious scene that harkens back to the original place um, for humanity, uh, the place of communion with God. And it is precisely in this setting that Jesus calls out to Mary. He says, Mary, he calls her by name. And she immediately recognizes her Lord. She says, Rabuni. This encounter is just so intimate. This is an encounter of two lovers. And that is what the church fathers have indicated uh, while commenting on the Song of Songs, the, the Song of Love. And this is the kind of encounter that Christians are all called to have with the risen Lord. It's a mystical encounter. It's a personal and intimate encounter with the risen Lord. So imagine the darkness. Now the light of Christ. And that light is a person with whom 
you can have a relationship of love, a relationship of communion. So that's the kind of joy that we celebrate on Easter. And that's the kind of joy that we've been celebrating as a church for 2,000 years. And that continues to this day. So I'd like to share with you uh, some of the things that have been happening uh, in the last uh, few weeks during Lent. Because Christians today uh, live out that joy, uh, regardless of whether the pandemic happens or not. Yes, it's true. We, uh, it's been such a great change for us, and we've been trying to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we adjust uh, ourselves to this new setting? But we've been inspired so much to exercise our creativity, something that Pope Francis wonderfully said, the creativity of love uh, in being Christians. And so I'd like to share with you some of these things. Give me one sec. I'm still trying to learn this technology. All right. So you might have uh, seen the uh, live interview on uh, CBC television yesterday. And Father Justin Huang, a pastor of St. Anthony of Padua, was on it. And uh, they talked about, it was a panel discussion with a uh, uh, rabbi uh, in Toronto, and it was a wonderful interview. I hope that they'll make it available on the internet. They talked about um, how yeah, different uh, religious communities are celebrating uh, holy days virtually. And there, Father Justin talked about how there seems to be a yeah, growing sense of goodwill among all peoples. Um, and the secular media, I, I would like to know, uh, has been uh, quite remarkable in this regard. They've been just so open to um, uh, showing how Christians are celebrating Easter. Um, so McLean's magazine uh, did a story on how Father James and Father Felix organized drive through confessions right here at St. Patrick's um, in the parking lot. I encourage you to uh, look that up. So this is a, a scene from uh, uh, one of the uh, penitents, uh, absolutely inspired by the evangelical creativity of so many during this time. I also want to point out uh, uh, how the Vancouver Sun carried a story on us uh, entitled, uh, Searching for Joy. Uh, how wonderful is that? Now, it wasn't just the priest leading, but also uh, the very uh, young people in particular who responded so well to this uh, new situation. So I've been working with uh, what's called the virtual parish community. It's a community of young adults, mostly based in Vancouver. And we meet, we've been meeting uh, every night to say the rosary at 9.30. And we've been also celebrating daily mass. We've had uh, many other activities, um, including uh, Lectio Divina, uh, movie nights, uh, dance nights, and uh, bring uh, BYOB, uh, bring your own breakfast, uh, spiritual conversation. So this is one comment that one of the community members uh, made, and I, I was, uh, it just made my day when I saw it, right? So thank you all the past, thank you all. The past two weeks has been amazing for me, and I've never felt stronger in my faith. Legit, every night, I can't wait to pray the rosary with you guys. Heart, 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 prayer, prayer, prayer. Um, another uh, young adult uh, who's been helping in other parishes as well. Uh, so here, uh, Brandon um, was setting up, uh, uh, helping the parish uh, set up for the Easter vigil, right? And he's uh, like giving instructions on Facebook uh, in the parish uh, Facebook page. Seems that young adults are really stepping up 
in this regard as leaders to help their parishes um, navigate this situation in a very creative way. So shout out to all young adults who've been doing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really mean this. You guys are awesome. So another comment from a community member, another amazing rosary, everyone. We prayed 12,430 Hail Marys tonight. I think we just made Zoom history. This comment was made after uh, we did what's called the uh, extravagant rosary. This was on Holy Monday. Um, this was on the Monday of the Holy Week. Um, we decided to be just extravagant with the Lord, uh, like the the, uh, the woman, Mary, who lavished Jesus' feet with expensive perfume and with her hair. Uh, we prayed all four mysteries of the rosary. I think it took us about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, it was just wonderful. And uh, the young adults, after they were done, they weren't like, oh, that was just so long. Uh, I'm ready to go to bed. No, they were like, when can we do this next? When, we, when can we do this again, right? Um, they're just so remarkable, so energetic. Another comment, God is so good. This is the best Lent and Easter season I've ever had. My prayer life is on fire. My community, you guys are so inspiring and seriously, my best friends, I love you all. And this is a screenshot from this morning's pancake breakfast. Uh, thank you, Freddie, for uh, decorating your virtual background with the Knights of Columbus. Uh, just, yeah, uh, we've had, uh, yeah, we had good times. So, yes, we're going through a tough time. There's no doubt about it. However, know that the Lord has conquered everything that we're going through, all the human suffering, that's the meaning of the cross, even death, he has conquered even that. And that's what we're celebrating on this Easter Sunday. And the same spirit that led Jesus um, to uh, go through the passion, death, and resurrection, uh, giving hope to the Israelites and all peoples, that same spirit is leading us today. That same spirit is leading us today. And we have so much to hope for. I truly believe that uh, God is raising a new generation of young leaders in the church for their parishes, for their dioceses, and for the whole world. And so I'd like to pray for them. Um, I believe that this situation could really be um, an occasion of renewal in the church, a time for a spiritual uh, springtime, if you will. Let us now stand to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father the maker, of, maker of heaven and earth, of all, of all things visible, visible and invisible. I believe in I believe one Lord, in one. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, who came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have, will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look, look upon us in our lowliness. For the Church, our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Michael, all the clergy and religious, and all the faithful, witness to Jesus risen and present among us in our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations and between peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's protection for all of God's children, for the safety and for the health and safety of everyone during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who lack caring and compassion, and for those who reach out to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, God's people gathered here, called to be a community that recognizes and celebrates the presence of the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our own hearts, let us offer our personal intentions. For these intentions, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Joy for the end. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, for at all times to acclaim <clears throat> you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unden unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth depend on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred day, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give, 
the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. And therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. And through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Pater Noster, Pater Noster, Pater Noster, Sicut in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus debitoribus nostris, Et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Peace. your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed, alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth, alleluia, alleluia. Let us make spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Greetings, our world was broken. The Lord of life lay dead. Take up your cross, he told us, who followed where he led. Would we now hang in torment with 
thieves on every side our Passover shattered our hope crucified three days we hid in silence in bitter fear and grief three days we clung together where he had washed our feet three days and on the third day the woman came at dawn his tomb they said was empty his broken body gone who could believe their story the dead do not arise yet he walks among us and with our own eyes we've seen him at this table we've shared his bread and wine hearts burning bright within us we've seen his glory shine three days our world was broken and in an instant healed god's covenant of mercy in mystery revealed two thousand years are one day in god's eternal sight and yesterday sorrows are this day's delight though still christ's body suffers pierced daily by the sword yet death has no dominion the risen christ is lord Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we close, uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Father James, uh, pastor of St. Patrick's Parish, and also Father Felix, uh, the assistant pastor, um, as well as Father Nick, uh, who's uh, celebrated the Easter Triduum uh, with us, um, putting together these four celebrations, so including the Easter Sunday, uh, has been a lot of work. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussions involved because this was just so unusual. But uh, we've uh, made it. And uh, I want to say we, we made it together with you guys. I hope that it was a spiritually enriching experience for you. Um, 
So I'd like to thank uh, also the cantors for today, uh, Trisha, Ralph, Tasha, Michael, uh, the readers, Abby, Luigi, Mari, and Wen, the altar server, Juan Pablo, who's been serving at all four math, uh, lit liturgies, and on tech support, Jason Alojado and Brian Abbas. Um, and uh, so the virtual parish will resume the daily rosary and the daily mass as usual. So at 9 a.m. for daily mass and for 9.30 for the rosary. Oh, and next Sunday, um, we will, uh, how, remember how we began the Divine Ner Mercy Novena on Good Friday together? So we'll end it together as well. So next Sunday, we'll begin, uh, and we'll say the uh, chaplet at uh, 3 o'clock together, and then, uh, uh, and then we'll say Mass. Okay, so that's next Sunday, and we'll make the announcements. Um, right after this Mass, uh, we'll show a video uh, by Father James and Father Felix, an Easter greeting video. And so please stay for that. Um, and I've been told that today is Clea's birthday. Uh, she's a member of the virtual community. Now, we normally don't sing happy birthday during mass. Okay, just want to be very clear about that, but we're going through a time when self-isolation uh, is just so prevalent. And uh, I think we can use this kind of occasion to, you know, um, um, help people cope with that. And so I'd like to invite you to sing happy birthday for Clea. Um, I don't know if she's in Zoom or she's watching live. I'm not sure, but maybe she can check the recording afterwards too. So um, please, uh, I'm going to unmute all okay, just for a moment and then please sing happy birthday for Clea, okay? okay. Please, uh, happy birthday. I'm going to unmute all. Please sing happy birthday for Kia. Uh, uh, <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Clea. Happy birthday to you. Okay, that was a bit chaotic, but that, that's okay. Um, okay, um, I also wanna uh, inform you of how all of our celebrations uh, have been recorded and are available on uh, St. Patrick's YouTube channel. Um, and St. Patrick's Parish also has a Facebook page. Um, and of course, they are also available on Vocations Vancouver. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well done for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity. And in his, in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen.
now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Oh. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and did alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah, our triumphant holy day, hallelujah, who did once upon the cross, Suffer to redeem our lives. Alleluia. Hi, everyone. Here we are in our garden once again, and it's Sunday morning, and the rise of the daffodils and many of the flowers it is a new springtime as we celebrate Easter. I want to take this opportunity as the pastor of St. Patrick's, Father James Hughes, along with Father Felix. So between for both of us and to be uh, in this moment of challenge, we want to uh, wish each and every one of you the bright promises of the Easter hope, knowing that Jesus, in fact, has come to save us and that we are called to help one another, to bring the message of Christ, of salvation to many others. So as we do so, uh, let us celebrate together in prayer and know and be assured of our own prayers, especially as we fervently celebrate Mass and we also want you to know that as we enter into the Easter season, that uh, there still will be maybe further opportunities for confession. We just ask you to remain posted to St. Pat's Vancouver, stpatsvan.com on our website for further details. Father Felix. First and foremost, I miss you all so much. Um, I have been missing you every day uh, sing, uh, since we've um, we've been separated, but I think I, I really pray and hope that this Easter season will bear much fruit uh, of all the things that you have gone through uh, for the past few weeks uh, at the end of our Lenten season. Um, we all know that Jesus is triumphant in every way. He doesn't leave any part of our hearts in darkness, but he redeems all of it in his suffering, death, and resurrection. So as we, we are as, as we are celebrating this Easter today together, um, let us offer all that we have gone through, all the things uh, that we had to go through due to the isolation um, that came to us without our willing it, Nonetheless, uh, it was a good opportunity that God allowed us to really go through as, as part of our purification to really come to a closer relationship with Him. So in this, uh, in this Easter season, uh, I really pray deeply that all of you are blessed uh, abundantly through God's love and mercy, that you may persevere uh, in this hopeful and grace-filled season that you may always uh, remain close to Jesus' heart 
And remember that we priests are continuing to keep you all in our prayers. Also on behalf of Father Paul Gu, who is in residence with us, he sends his regards, his love and prayers as well. So as Father Felix just said, we definitely miss you all and God bless you and happy Easter. Bye. <laughs>